Hey guys, uh, Enter the Stars, welcome to the channel. And I hope everybody is enjoying their time with family today. Uh, it's Easter Sunday. And before we get into today's show, I wanted to give you an update on Britney Spears' bizarre Instagram baby skull picture. Now, a couple of you had sent me some additional information on what this is about. And you dug deeper into this princess that we had uncovered. Now, this is her. I mean, if you will remember the picture that Britney Spears uploaded on her Instagram, it was a woman holding a child, but the child's head was a skull. But we found the original picture, and it was the grandchild of Ulysses S. Grant. And a subscriber dug deeper into this and looked at the ancestors of this woman. Now, this is crazy. I'm going to pull my notes out here so you guys can see this. And look at the actual lineage, or ancestry, I guess you call it, of this woman. In her ancestry, you see there is a Wallachia, which is the place where Dracula is from. There is a Dimitri Satan. There are also other characters in here that are very bizarre. Constantine, here's Wallachia. Here, Archon, you see Archon. We all know what Archons are. And most notably, her name is actually Spiransky, as you can see here. So that seems to relate back to Spears. So what is she really trying to tell us with this? I don't know. I wanted to give you guys the update on the, the ancestry of this particular woman here. I think there was one more in here I wanted to show you guys as well. There's Wallachia, Count Contacuzino, Draghi, Draghici, which sounds like dragon, right? So weird stuff, you guys. All right, let's get into... The rest of today's show. I'm not going to have you guys on here long because I know it's a holiday. I actually forgot that I scheduled this particular show. So we'll get into the rest of it today here. Now, this next story is about Nike. Apparently, Nike is starting to distance themselves from Lil Nas and his Satan shoes. They've basically levied a lawsuit against him. and I believe they won this lawsuit. Asking him to stop the sale of his Satan shoes. I know the first thing that a lot of us talked about when this broke, when the story broke about these shoes, was we were associating, of course, Nike with, they have a lot of other satanic stuff that they've done and weird commercials. We already know that. We know what the Nike symbol means. Um, but they're trying to distance themselves from him. Now, the damage is already done, of course. These shoes have already been sold. And But they're trying to make it look like Nike is against this, right? Nike is waging an all-out WAR with the devil. A pair of company has success, successfully blocked the sale of Lil Nas Satan shoes, but they really haven't because they all already got sold. We're already shipping. And on Wednesday, a district court judge or a district court in New York approved Nike's request for a temporary restraining order against MSCHF. Now, he's, they're not actually suing Lil Nas himself. They're suing the company that's manufacturing the shoes, which is kind of weird. The art collective that, brand, that collaborated with the rapper to create a pair of sneakers containing one drop of human blood. So, you know, of course, the people that love Nike are going to say, oh, see, they didn't condone this. They weren't behind this. But at the end of the day, I believe they probably really were. Now, this story's been beaten to death, and I really don't want to go over these shoes any more than everyone already has. But one thing you will notice, this is one of the 72 demons of the Goetia. This is actually one of them listed in Wikipedia with these several legs. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five. This looks a lot like the Warp Speed logo, does it not? Now that I'm looking on this upon second examination, let me make sure we're connected first before we continue on with this. Good morning, everybody. So this let's let's pull this up here because I want to I want to do this justice here. So here is the warp speed logo. 
And of course, it's got the legs going round and round. Now, of course, Lil Nas probably had nothing to do with this. He's basically a puppet. But look at the War Speed logo. And then we looked at the Isle of Man flag, which is the same thing. See the legs going in a circle here? And of course, this is also the logo on Lil Nas Nike Satan shoes. But look at this. Now, this is called, a, they call it like a Triskelion or something like that. It's a well-known symbol, these legs going in a circle. And we had broken this down when we broke down the, the logo for Warp Speed. We broke all this down. We looked at the lineage of the T-Man, the Don, being from Olaf the Black. And we showed how the ancestries of the T-Man and Biden crossed each other. One of them imprisoned the other uh, in Scotland, of all places. So, let's go look at the 72 demons of the Goetia. See if we can find this particular demon that they're using. And the symbol of the triple legs. So here they are. Here's all the demons. And let's see if we can find the legged demon here. They might not list it here. The legs in a circle. Uh, it doesn't look like they have it here. So, needless to say, it's one of these demons from hell. The 72 demons of the Galatia. So, this is weird stuff, you guys. Weird times we're living in. Now, let's get into this next story. This is promising. These are the kinds of things that give me hope. Arkansas passes a bill to ban that word, care for that word, that word, okay? And what is this all about? Well, of course, people that are into this say that this is the single most extreme anti-law to ever pass through a state legislature. But what this does is it protects our children who are not even fully formed in their gender preferences from experiencing life-altering and lifelong changes to their gender that they're not even mature enough to understand yet. Let's read through some of this article here. Now, I always liked Arkansas. As you guys know, I saved up and have a small piece of land there that I hope to live on one day. It says here, the Arkansas Senate passed a bill Monday that would ban access to that word, inclusive, including those and hormones. The bill now heads to Governor Asa Hutchinson, a Republican. Unless he vetoes it, Arkansas will become the first state to ban this kind of surgery and care and hormones for youth. And I think this is a great thing. This is going back to moral values. Now, of course, there are people in the community that are very much against this, but of course they are because the agenda that the New World Order is pushing forward is to continue to move in that direction. So, of course, these people are going to be offended by this. The bill is one of two types of legislation being considered in more than two dozen states. That's another good sign. Measures that ban or restrict access to that word care for minors and those that ban young people from competing in school sports teams of their identity. Governors in three states, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Tennessee, have signed this athlete bans into law. Okay. In addition to Arkansas, Alabama, and Tennessee are also advancing restrictions on this kind of care. Alabama's Senate approved a bill that would make it a felony to provide such care as blockers and hormones for minors. And I think that's a good thing. So, this is good. This, is, this gives me hope. Now, I don't know how this is going to shake out or pan out. And of course, 
powers that be will use this to further divide people. They will call places like Arkansas backwards and not progressive and all the little words that they like to use to try to shame people who simply want to protect their children. Okay. Now, um, of course, look at this lady is trying to say that people that they were trying to take their own life in the last week after the bill passed. I, I just simply don't believe that. The reason why they're probably trying to do that is because they're on lockdown and haven't seen their friends in a year. I mean, it's not like someone can't just go to a different state if this is something they wanted to do. And why are they focusing this on the children and the state of the child instead of mentioning what the parent has to say about this? See, what they're trying to do is give the children more power than their parents. And that is just wrong on its face. If you have good, loving parents, those parents brought you into this world. They should be the ones to help shape you into what you will be. And anything that undermines that authority is anti, that's antichrist. That's, that's against what the Bible teaches. Okay. So again, it's about morals. So, this is all very interesting. Uh, I'll follow the story as the time goes on. Let's hope that they continue to support places like Arkansas in their efforts to take us back to the way things used to be, you know? So, what else do we have here? Let's get on to the next story here. And this is the Gizwell update. Now, I'm going to... Take this down here. There's some really weird stuff going on with the Giswell story. And another victim has come forward. And this is one of the more horrific claims that we've heard to date. I'm going to kind of browse through it. A new alleged victim has come forward. Claims that she has been repeatedly violated by Giswell, both of them, in front of her son. And threatened with being thrown to the alligators if she spoke out. The allegations which were filed against Eggstein as a state last week are some of the most recent accusations of abuse made against Miss Giswell and her boyfriend. The woman used a Jane Doe pseudonym to protect her identity, accuses the couple in civil lawsuit of all that stuff, as well as physical mutilation. Well, what happened to her? Well, she is claiming that they forced her to get a surgery that would change her. She's Turkish born. She claims in the court documents that she was introduced to egg stain by her boss and was told, he told her he was looking for, to buy property in Florida and inquired after her services. She claimed she later met Giswell, who introduced herself as G-Max at a barbecue, she began an extended effort of persuasion and grooming to get her to come work for them. She eventually agreed in 2008 and alleges during a visit to his home that she was had things happen to her. She attempted to escape, telling them she intended to report it. She then says that she... Um, that she had already called the police and two men that claimed to be police officers arrived at the mansion and threatened to arrest her for that. To take her away from her son and deport her. Wow. So then they took her out to a lake, took her out of the car and told her in detail as had happened to other girls in the past, she would end up in this body of water, be devoured by alligators. Should she ever reveal what he had done to her? So, you know, if the police are watching this thing to go out and investigate, I mean, the that's the crazy thing about Florida is all these bodies of water are full of alligators. So probably a lot of people are dumped out there, never to be seen again, no DNA evidence, which is really crazy. But they the police should narrow down this timeline and see if anyone else went missing during this time. Someone always misses someone. I mean, there are very few people on this planet who disappear, who no one cares about and do, don't report missing. It says here, then she then picked up her eight-year-old son and checked him into the hotel. 
where over a period of several days, they repeatedly violated her in the presence of her son. Eggstain forced the woman to hold on to burner phones, wires, and other electronic devices devices that Eggstain was seeking to conceal from discovery by law enforcement. They held on to her passport and threatened to deport her. And they said, the woman said that he had personal connections to many powerful actors with the, in the legal system and elsewhere, including the FBI and U.S. Immigration and Customs. And that's probably true, which is why she took the threats very seriously. She was then trafficked out to a number of associates, including an unnamed local judge. She, she appeared to be much younger than 26, she was, but she was told to tell the men that she was with that she was 17. And then she says that in May 2008, he forced her to have reconstructive surgery, which was conducted in a wealthy person's home by a man with a Russian accent to create a false impression that she was a virgin for high profile clients. And does it get more sick than that? The procedure left her mutilated and permanently damaged. So apparently she's a Muslim or Turkish. Now, who knows if this story is true? I just can't imagine what the whole purpose of putting out a fake story like this would serve. This is probably real. Question is, is she really in jail? Question is, will she ever will we ever even see a picture of her or videotape of her in jail? Those are the questions. So let's go back into the chat for a minute. Thanks everybody for showing up on a holiday. And we can maybe discuss some of these stories. But that's pretty much all I had for you today. Now, thanks to the people that showed up to the premiere that I just uploaded about 45 minutes ago. We'll be covering that in a full live show all next week. So we've got three three different trailers that I uploaded over the weekend. If you haven't seen all three of those, you might want to take a look at them. And we'll be covering those in live shows over the course of the beginning of the week here. So let's see what's going on in the chat, everybody. Thanks for showing up. Oh, I talked to KJ, and I know some of you were concerned. Scariest movie ever because he scheduled a live show and then didn't uh, attend the show. And so with everything that was going on with Jeff C and how that happened, I think a lot of people were really afraid and concerned. Apparently he has a backup channel. And unfortunately, I don't know the name of that backup channel, but he has a backup channel and he went live on that channel. Why did he have to do that? Because they took away his ability to live stream because he got a strike for, they said, medical disinformation. So prayers to KJ. I don't know what he said or showed on the show before that that caused him to get the strike, but it sounds like they got it out for him. So I know that he's considering other platforms at this point. And that's just how YouTube works, you guys. It goes round and round. We all get a dose of it here and there when they decide they want to pick on somebody. And unfortunately, they're picking on KJ right now. So, yes, I agree, Warrior for Truth. Easter is pagan. Notice I didn't say Happy Easter. Okay. KJ's What Happened. Yeah, it was on that show, but he has a backup channel. All right. Yeah, I think, yeah, it was on KJ's What Happened. I'm not sure what which where he's backed up on. You should probably just go over to his channel, um, Scariest Movie Ever, and there's probably links to his backup channel and stuff. He just can't live stream there right now because he got a strike. So... That should come off in like a, a week or two, but um, that's the story with KJ. That's why he didn't show up to his live show. Yes, Ishtar Day. That's what today is. All right, I'm in the chat. Uh, did I see the story about the real Wonder Twins? Yeah, someone had sent that to me. Um... I think that was a case of super fecundation, wasn't it? Where she got 
had two twins. She had was impregnated several weeks apart or something and gave birth one at a time or something like that. Yeah, they're coming after us. Read you get some machine. That is the truth. Oh, yeah, he has his website too. Thanks, Jessica. Casey's voice sounds just like KJ. The real Wonder Twins. And hey, let's look it up. Thanks, Mom. Mom. Let's look it up since we got a little time here. The real Wonder Twins. We had just covered this too. Um, we were just covering the Wonder Twins, which makes this more interesting, right? We decoded them. Uh, let's see here. See if we can find that story. Oh, it doesn't look like it's going to give us the story here. But we'll cover that later at a certain point, you guys. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Super Twins. Okay, let's try Super Twins. Thanks. Woman gives birth. Might as well cover that. Oh, here we go. Okay, so here it is, New York Post. Now, we were just talking about the Wonder Twins. What was that, three weeks ago, maybe? And now, all of a sudden... They've got stories on twins. Now, we noticed we were talking about twins all year, all last year, weren't we? Janice, the twinning. And at a certain point, we actually spoke the words that we should be looking out for a, an explosion of twin births. Remember those conversations? And then all of a sudden, a couple weeks ago, they're now saying that there has been an explosion of twin births. So these children would have been conceived right around March or April of 2020. So this is really weird. So then this story pops up just today or yesterday. UK woman gives birth to super twins conceived three weeks apart. Now, what is conception? Let's quickly review this. This is important. Conception is the moment that the sperm meets the egg. That's the point of conception, which is different than the date of birth, obviously. Date of birth happens um, 38 weeks after the sperm meets the egg. But there's this weird period before conception called after the last menstrual cycle. And that's two additional weeks, bringing the total number of weeks after the last menstrual cycle of 40 total weeks of basically the egg in the process of life. See how that works? So this is what we talk about when we talk about 40 weeks of gestation. It's after the last menses. Now let's get into this story because this is a prime example of what's called super fecundation. It's conception occurring um, at different times and it's actually possible to happen from two different fathers. So you can have two different fathers, twins from different fathers in the womb at the same time. And this is probably or possibly how it happened with Eve. And Eve being impregnated one by Adam and the other by the devil, which is how we have the two bloodlines. One born Cain, one born Abel. Abel from Adam, Cain from his father, the devil, which is what Jesus said to the Pharisees. So this was April 4th. And let's read the story. A British woman has delivered two babies at the same time who were conceived three weeks apart. Rebecca was already pregnant with her son Noah when she conceived her daughter, Rosalie. Look at the name Noah, right? We just were talking about 40 days and nights that it rained. That was the time of the being in the waters, the nested reality. So you got the ribs of the boat, like the human rib cage, submerged in water for 40 weeks, 40 days and nights. And that, that is a nested reality or nested truth of birth, which is also a nested reality of baptism. Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and nights and then baptized. See all this, these themes of water submersion and rebirth. Water is, in, in essence, a portal into the spirit. It says we feel, feel really lucky. It's so lucky to have twins anyway, but to have such special twins is so lovely. It's wonderful. They're a blessing. Robert said that she 
and her husband, Riss, had gone to a fertility clinic in England to get a drug to help with ovulation. On my first cycle on that drug, we became pregnant. It wasn't until 12 weeks scan for her first baby that she was expecting two children. I'd just been having a conversation with the sonographer about my previous scan. So she was aware that I was only having one baby. So she was so silent. I thought something awful had happened because she didn't say anything. She told the independent. Then she looked at me and said, did you know you're expecting twins? My heart skipped a beat. I actually said to her, is this, is, is his real? What is his real? Oh, that doesn't make sense. So here are the twins. Beautiful children there. Oh, look, <laughs> it says right here, Roberts had become pregnant with the twins through a phenomenon known as superfetation. It's actually called superfecundation. But this might be the updated term, but we looked into this years ago. It occurs when an egg is released from a woman's ovary after she is already pregnant and implants alongside the first embryo. Superfetation, which produces what are known as super twins, is very rare. And there are only a few documented cases in the world. The outlets reported. Though our babies had different due dates, Roberts gave birth to both on the same day in September 2020. So you got to ask yourself, does this have anything to do with whatever is causing this twin explosion? Whether it be, well, there were, we didn't have VCs back then, but we had CV-19. So interesting thing, interesting times we live in, right? All right, let's go back in here into the chat. All right. Let that catch up. Yeah, she took fertility. Yeah, that, that was probably the reason why that happened in that case, because of the fertility drugs. But did they look alike? No, because they had different DNA. So they weren't identical twins. Okay. All right. Okay, guys, I'm going to let you go. Have a great day. Enjoy your families. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow.